I can love people and want to see them held accountable for their mm-hmm. actions. Like yeah. those two things don't have to exist separately. And right. also I can see people being held accountable for their actions and still have love for them and right. still feel their humanity, even in the midst of their mistakes and their pain and their regret. Sometimes they're double down that you realize that it is eventually going to turn into regret. Like, I, yeah. I guess like essentially what happened is I had to make a decision of like, do I want to live in my head in a place where theories rule or do I want to live in reality and test some theories and see what happens? Mm -hmm. And I prefer reality. And reality has shown me that like the way we go about blaming people, the way we go about punishing people, the way we are so comfortable calling for accountability for everybody but ourselves in a lot of situations. Um, I'm not okay with that. I'm not cool with that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff I don't participate in because I don't agree with the way that it plays out. And it's like a lot of people sometimes it's like, you gotta understand you might have really good values and even better politics, but how you show up, how those good values and good politics manifest in your actions um, still counts. <laughs> you, you can't hide behind good intention forever. You can't hide behind good politics forever. At right. some point, you have to bow to the truth of your humanity, which is that we are all flawed and we're all connected. And you can blame people all you want. At the end of the day, they matter. And they're, what happens to them is going to matter in your life too, whether you want it to or not. I think that is a very important point. And I think a lot of what people are doing these days is deconstructing perhaps what you already knew based on your lived Mm. experience, right? We're deconstructing Mm. what is justice? What is a a criminal justice system really for? Um, What are other models of accountability is this really the right way and one of the things that I wanted to discuss with you um, oftentimes when we're met with these kind of ideas of divestment from the police and reinvestment uh, or Mm -hmm. even as far as abolition there's Mm -hmm. the uh, kind of knee-jerk reaction of well what do we do with the rapists and the murderers that's the question that people pose and in December of 2020, we interviewed poet and activist Kamon Felix um, about her. I love Kamon. We love Kamon. No, no, we love Kamon. Props up to Kamon for sure. It was it was one of the most impactful conversations that I think we've had on the on the podcast. But we talked about her experience with incarceration and uh, her experience with sexual violence and. Mm you know, her cousin was the one who abused her. He ended up in prison for actually something totally different, but she thought that she, her telling about her experience and what had been done to her by her cousin was the thing that ended, landed him in prison and carried that yeah. for, for a very long time. And she, you know, would say that the, the system did nothing to heal her wounds. It did nothing to provide restoration for what had happened. And um, knowing your circumstance with being a survivor of sexual violence, I wonder if that rings true Mm. for you too. I mean, I never attempted to, uh, until I was an adult, really tell anybody what had happened to me um, about being sexually assaulted. And I don't necessarily regret that. I regret the way it made me feel, the shame Mm -hmm. that was allowed to fester in the dark um, because I didn't want to bring that particular experience, uh, the secret of that experience into the light. But I'm gonna be honest and say that, you know, since then I have had other situations Um, where I have been assaulted or attempted to be assaulted in some way. And to be perfectly honest, nothing, I've gone to the police and I've not gone to police. And it was more traumatic both times to go to the police than it was not to go to the police. And 
the trauma comes from the way you're spoken to, the things that you're asked, the things that you are asked to remember, knowing that if you can't remember things accurately or as well in the moment, that that could be used against you in the future if this becomes, like, absolutely, like, it, it offered me no comfort. And I think if you ask a lot of people about when it comes to who have been assaulted or who have had um, family members who or loved ones who were the victim of murder, it is not the state that puts you at ease. It's not the state that helps mm -hmm. you heal. It's really even the state that brings any sort of justice or accountability into the foray. So, right what is the point at that point? So I've never had any real delusions about that system working on my behalf, even as members of my family worked within that system. Mm -hmm. We, even then we knew it wasn't for us, you know, <laughs> to thrive. Yeah. So yeah, like, I, I mean, how many rapes get solved? <laughs> how many rapes lead to conviction? How many, how many like accusations of murder lead to conviction? Like it's, it's just, these numbers are not as high as we think they are that we perceive them as. It's like, this is not law and order. Mm 